Hey guys, it's been a couple weeks since we originally talked about doing the Community Gamer Motivation Profile, so I figured it's time to unveil the final profile. You guys may have already taken a look at it, depending on how late um, you submitted your results, but and a really interesting picture kind of started to come together. So we want to cover that, talk about what it means and what we've maybe learned about the community through the profile. So first off, um, Mike and Kason and I were each going to talk about our own personal profiles, maybe help you guys get to know a little bit about what makes us tick. So for me, just to kick it off, um, I was kind of surprised with mine because um, there were a lot of things I actually ranked really low on. Uh, things that I wouldn't think I would rank so so low on. Um, Fear didn't surprise me. Destruction, 4%. Eh, I mean, destroying things in games doesn't really tend to motivate me normally. Um, power, 3%. Now, this was one that surprised me because I do tend to grind a lot in RPGs so that I, I can take out bosses in, in, in one go. And uh, so I guess it depends on how exactly you interpret the uh, the... the power score here but I, I mean I was three percent I was almost as low as you could possibly be on here they're talking they they summarize it here saying that gamers who score high on this component strive for power in the context of the game world uh, they want to become as powerful as possible seeking out tools so I guess for me I don't tend to continue to try and make my character as strong as possible in a game so that might be why I, I, I scored that low I my motivation is generally to overcome a specific obstacle rather than make myself more powerful so I thought that was kind of interesting so one of the things I scored the highest on actually the thing I scored the highest on was strategy uh, 86% and if you were to look at the number of hours I've spent on various games I would say that makes a lot of sense uh, the game I probably put more hours into than anything else really is Civilization 5 I get a lot of enjoyment out of playing a game, trying to come up with different strategies, trying to figure out um, what works and what doesn't. I really like the long drawn out games in Civilization V. It's fun to see a strategy that maybe takes a, whole, a day or two to, to um, see come to fruition. So that's that. I'd say that probably describes me really well. So my overall, the shape of my, my chart thing, it was like so wonky. I, I rank pretty low on a lot of stuff. I feel like I'm pretty chill as a, as a gamer. I, I wasn't really um, as high on immersion as I actually would have thought I would have been. Um, they're putting me story 45%. And, I, and I, I can see that because that's basically smack dab in the middle. I've, I can't remember the last time I bought a game specifically because I was motivated by the interesting story it was going to tell. Usually I'm more motivated by other factors than that. So I guess that makes a lot of sense. And then fantasy was a little low for me because I tend to not get into the role playing aspect of games as much. Um, I don't generally feel like I'm becoming the character in a game. I generally want to just see what whatever character is going to do. I think a great uh, character that I really really like is Link and I never feel like I'm Link or that I'm trying to be Link. Um, I, so you know that is what it is. The rest of it was fair, fairly predictable. Competition ranked pretty low. I don't play a lot of online multiplayer games normally besides Splatoon. So I think that made a lot of sense. My gamer profile was not a surprise. Not, not even a little bit of a surprise. <laughs> and it actually reflected pretty well uh, what the communities was. Very, very high on immersion. Um, story and fantasy through the roof um, as well as on mastery which is a challenge and strategy those were basically the two high points for me um, creativity was also uh, I think a little higher than maybe the community aggregate was and action was a little higher for me than the community aggregate was but my profile very much was a reflection of what the communities was I'm here for story I'm here for immer uh, immersion I think music would probably also fit into immersion, but um, that's what I play a game for primarily, and then the gameplay, uh, you know, the technicalities of it, the, the strategy and the challenge are kind of like the next most important thing to me. So that's basically what it showed in my profile, so which uh, didn't surprise me at all. My gamer profile focused like so much on immersion. 
immersion in story. Like uh, my immersion um, as so fantasy and story. So fantasy was 87 for me. Story was 81. So that clearly is what motivates me, as I assumed for most of you guys. Um, very similar to the community, to the dark pixel aggregate. One thing that was a little different for me is that my challenge is at 18%, which is lower than I'd expected it to be, but the strategy is at 62%. So I, I, I kind of scored pretty well in that area, but um, way more strategy focused than challenge. I don't enjoy games that are just really hard, but I do enjoy games that require a lot of strategy. Um, so I don't know. That's kind of like most RPGs. I mean, most RPGs, when you run into a problem, it's not so much like the pure hardness. It's like, go, go level up, right? <laughs> to make it easier or find a different strategy. And so that's kind of uh, what motivates me to play. But it's mostly immersion story fantasy stuff. Like being in the world, feeling like I'm part of the greater, you know, the greater story. Not just the linear story that we're following, but the world and its story and everything that's going on there. That, that really is what like drives me to play games. And it's awesome to see that that's also what drives most of you guys to play games. All right, so now that you guys have gotten a look into our own personal profiles, let's dive into the community profile and see what we can learn. So the first thing, very top of the page, the way the adjectives that they're using to describe, describe the Dark Pixel community are calm, independent, deeply immersed, and practical. I would say those are all really, really accurate. I'd say we have a freaking calm <laughs> uh, uh, audience as, as opposed to a lot of other uh, YouTube channels out there but very independent, very independently minded, and people that like to get super invested in a story, um, in an in experience, as well as, yeah, practical. I'm not 100% sure what the practical is playing off of exactly. Okay, so really quickly, before we go into what the numbers were and everything, I wanna say something about what percentiles even are. Obviously, most of you probably understand this, but if you're, say, 90th percentile for something, that means that 90% of the people who ranked on this system ranked lower than you, only 10% ranked higher than you. So that can be easy to look at like in a linear way, sort of like you're starting a race and you're you know, 0% at the beginning and 100% at the end. But these types of populations and, and um, surveys tend to represent a, what's known as a bell curve distribution, a normal, a normal distribution. Now, a normal distribution, it looks like, looks like a bell curve. So when you look at where the 90th percentile is on that curve, it, when you look at it on the graph, it actually doesn't look that far off from kind of the main central cluster of people. And that's because generally as human beings, we do tend to be more similar to each other than not. Then you slope on down and you have the outliers towards the ends. The thing is, is, it's really interesting to see how far of a jump the 97th percentile is to the 98th when you view it on a graph like that. So the differences at the, at the extremes are very, very different from each other. So it's important to keep that in mind when we're going over all these numbers. You can be 40% up to 60% and you're still roughly kind of in that central block. Okay, so the number one thing about the Dark Pixel community is that the community is extremely story driven. Let's look at this here. We ranked as a community 96% on immersion. 96%, that's super high. That score is uh, actually uh, calculated by combining two other things, uh, those being fantasy and story. Now, fantasy and story, um, you'd think they'd be really, really closely related to each other. But there's an important distinction here. There's an important distinction. The fantasy aspect, they describe it, which by the way, 90, 91st percentile here on the fantasy aspect. Uh, the fantasy aspect they're describing as gamers who score high on fantasy want their gaming experience to allow them to become someone else somewhere else. So the games they give as examples of this Skyrim, Fallout, Mass Effect, those kinds of games where you're truly role playing, a, a literal RPG. Uh, the kind of thing that you would find more in D&D. Uh, &D. Um, 91%, but the community ranked even higher than that on story, 97th percentile. 
Now story, they're breaking it down as gamers who score high on story want games with elaborate campaign storylines, a cast of multi-dimensional characters with interesting backstories and personalities. So examples of very story-driven games are The Last of Us, uh, the Bioshock series, uh, games where you're really in it for that story-driven experience. Now sometimes those kinds of games are maybe taking a little bit of user choice away to provide a really strong story. Other times they're not. There are some examples that don't. But it's interesting, that's the number one most important thing to the community, is story. And I bet any one of you out there could have predicted that from a channel that is mostly built around Final Fantasy reviews, right? So secondary to that immersion category is the mastery category. It's interesting to look at because that's broken down again with two separate scores on strategy and challenge. Now the mastery category, uh, the percentile rank was 60, 60 first percentile. So it's honestly not off the charts, not that high, not really much of an outlier here. But when you break it down, it's interesting the composition of that. Within the mastery category, the strategy percentile rank was 83rd, pretty high. Um, but that's paired up with the challenge uh, metric, which was 40th percentile. Challenge, they're describing it as gamers who score high on challenge enjoy playing games that rely heavy or heavily on skill and ability. They are persistent and take time to practice and hone their gameplay. So this sounds very much more like, uh, they use Dark Souls as an example of this, a game that you can practice and get better at. So there's all kinds of games that fall under this category. Those could be first person shooters, some kind of online competitive uh, game, but whatever it is, the common thread is it's something that you keep working at to get better at. And um, so, you know, kind of still middle of the road on, on that challenge category, but strategy was through the roof. They're describing strategy as uh, gamers who enjoy games that require careful decision making and planning. They like to think through options and likely outcomes. That sounds very much in line with RPGs to me. Um, especially, you know, if you're managing uh, <laughs> your HP and your MP and, and your party in a long boss battle, I mean, that very much involves a lot, of, a lot of strategy as well as all your preparations going into battle. So games that they provide as examples of strategy really are like XCOM, Fire Emblem, the Civilization series. A lot of these are obviously, I mean, you've got SRPGs. Um, a lot of these are games that require managing lots of resources, lots of things that maybe don't have obvious direct connections or outcomes, and so there's, uh, there's that level of extreme forward thinking that you need. So it's obvious that in the community that's also a super, super important thing. Um, those were probably the three that would have been the most predictable, I would say, strategy, fantasy, and story. Um, those you would think that the channel would rank really high on those, and, and we do. Now for things that the community ranked very, very lowly on. Well, let's take a look at that. Um, action. I think action was the lowest category for, for our community. 17th percentile. That's, that's very low. Um, action is comprised of destruction and excitement on their charts here. And it's primarily that destruction, that low destruction score that's pulling things lower. Um, you know, which kind of makes sense. I mean, they're talking about, you know, sixth percentile for destruction, so very low. Gamers who score high on this component are agents of chaos and destruction. They love having many tools that are disposable to blow things up. They talk about Call of Duty and Battlefield games, people who enjoy just destroying stuff. Um, obviously that can be really fun in games, but is that motivating why you're playing a game? According to our community, no. No, it's not. Uh, and that's paired up with the excitement score, 34%. Now this is kind of interesting to me. That's not a really low number. Um, it's skewing towards the low side. But they're explaining this as um, gamers who enjoy fast-paced and intense games uh, that provide a constant adrenaline rush. So a lot of fighting games fall under this. And uh, I would even say what we're seeing with uh, the way Square Enix is moving with Final Fantasy XV would lean more towards that excitement category, trying to build up the excitement, something that uh, might actually get your blood really pumping. I know that can happen in a turn-based battle system still, but those any, any action mechanic in video games, that's kind of what they're gunning for. They want you to really feel like you had to make some quick split-second decisions. Our community doesn't rank so low on that, but it is, it is a little on the low side. 
Okay, and now for the second lowest category, social. Um, which I think is mostly being pulled down by what it looks like, the uh, competition category. The social is comprised of competition and community. Now the social score was 24th percentile, so it's not like off the charts low, but it's definitely lower. Um, not as motivating for the community. But I think that's mostly being pulled down by the competition, uh, competition metric here. 14th percentile. 14th percentile on competition. I, if gamers who score high on competition, they're saying, enjoy competing with other players, often in duels, matches, or team versus team scenarios. They give examples of these games as being StarCraft, League of Legends, any game where really it's it's not single player experience, it's something that you're experiencing with other people head to head. Um, I have to say I score fairly low on this as well myself. Uh, I don't get as much enjoyment in a game context out of playing against another human being as I do just kind of experiencing something kind of on my own. So it appears that the community is very much in line with that. But talking about community, the community aspect of the social component here was 46 percentile, almost smack dab right in the middle. And I would say that makes a lot of sense. I would say that anybody who's really active on this channel is searching for some sense of community. They're not going to be completely um, isolated people. They want to be able to discuss things, bounce theories and ideas off of uh, other people and see what other people think. So that made a lot of sense to me. Um, they're also talking about ranking higher in community as being like, you know, you're more driven in multiplayer games that are cooperative as opposed to uh, where you're opposing each other. Uh, one of the reasons I love Splatoon so much is because there's a lot of really interesting cooperation there. I know that uh, Overwatch, that's one of the appeals of that game as well, is that even if you don't want to play the game to go out and just target other players specifically, there are roles for people and it, it, there can be a lot of satisfaction found in cooperating and filling a role on a team. I think a lot of MMOs can fall under that as well. You, you're a healer class and you're really in it for the ability to help other people out more, of this, more so than like specifically taking down anybody else. So that's basically it. That's how the gamer motivation profile for the Dark Pixel community breaks down. Now you guys can still contribute to this profile if you haven't yet. Um, it's probably not going to deviate a lot from where it is right now, but it would be interesting for anybody interested to see what their own profile is and then you can add it to the community profile as well. So we'll have the link for that in the description below. I thought that was really fun. We got to know a little bit more about each other and um, hopefully we'll see if they continue to refine this in the future. I see a lot of areas where this could be improved. I remember there were a lot of people commenting saying, I knew what they were getting at when they asked this question and that's something I, you know, I like uh, more social games under this context, but less social games under another context. And I totally get that. These kinds of things, they're, they're imperfect, but it is really fun to see when you level the playing field, how does everyone rank answering the same set of questions. So, a lot of fun. Let us know what you guys think about the profile in the comments below. If you noticed anything for yourself that seemed weird or as, a, as an outlier, or what you interpret the community profile to mean to you. Um, particularly, what do you think practical means? They're, they're giving us the adjective practical in the community. And I want to know what your take is on that. Calm, independent, deeply immersed, and practical. What the heck. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us, you guys, and we'll see you again next time.